But we have a, a lot of questions. Uh, the, the discussion on Chad was uh, really impressive and fantastic. Thank you very much for all the comments. Uh, I'll try to give some, uh, some uh, selected questions to our, our experts. Can we see them? Yeah, hello again. Um, so first question, uh, first question to Maciej um, about, uh, about standards and guidelines for calculating carbon footprint. Are there any Polish, uh, Polish or in, cent in some other European, Central European countries some codes or standards? Um, not, uh, in case of Polish standards, not uh, to my knowledge, uh, unfortunately. Um, I think the most important and uh, the most influential standard that I would personally recommend is the PAST 2080, it's a British standard. Uh, it was released together with a guideline uh, which has multiple examples of how it should be implemented. And uh, I believe uh, that's the perfect way to start your uh, learning about carbon calculation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a few questions were uh, thanks of, of Pavel Kretsch. Uh, thank you very much, Pavel, for your uh, contribution here. Uh, I don't know which one should we use because it's still uh, so short time. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe a question about uh, um, about the footprint once again. Uh, where is the impact from construction operation included? Uh, Samson or or maybe Maciej, who is going to answer for that question? I mean, using I machines. Samson, using machines. I believe. Hello. Samson, maybe. Yeah. Samson, would you like to answer? Could you hear me? Yeah. I'm yes, we do. Yeah, I think uh, in the life cycle analysis, the impact from the construction operation is under A5. When we check from A3, A1 to A3 is extraction stage, while A4 is tran uh, transportation. But impact from operation, construction operation is under A5. So it's under A5 in our analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm, the question uh, to Dr. Heller from Magda. Uh, uh, excuse me, do you want a question in English or uh, should I say in Polish? Uh, just unmute your mic. We can't hear you. Sławek? Uh, Musisz od, odmutować, odmutować mikrofon. You have unmute, you, you have to unmute your Sorry, mic. sorry. Yeah. Może po polsku będzie wygodniej. Okay. So, maybe in Polish it will be more convenient. Every BIM project, even the one which is uh, oriented only uh, on the project, uh, should take into account the whole life cycle, so including exploitation phase. So why do you believe that the exploitation phase is being neglected? Well, it's a very interesting question, and it is exactly the question which shows here a certain... Uh, unfortunately. So, uh, let's move to another question. Let's move to the question uh, to Kamil. Could you refer to the sentence that multiple companies claim they do digital twin scanning the building or doing just the 4D schedule? Camille? Yeah, it seems that with digital twinning, we are going through a similar story that we uh, went with BIM. For example, there was uh, this stage of BIM development where we thought that 3D models are BIM. Now we know that BIM is something more. And it seems that the same is with digital twinning. So scanning, 3D scanning, for example, is not yet digital twinning. 3D scans are perfect basis for creation of digital twinning. But in my opinion, for example, this semantic information of model, which is not yet uh, existing in 3D scans, is very important. So we cannot really say that uh, this scanning or scanning scheduling 
uh, is the same as digital twinning. It might be because uh, digital twinning is kind of a slogan today. Yeah, we are not defined or already what is this exactly. So this is why uh, we are going through uh, these situations. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Sławek. Slavek, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, there was some disturbance. So let me uh, end my answer to the question. Good, may I now? Yes, please. Uh, difference uh, between uh, the approach, uh, the design and managerial approach to the life cycle in relation to infrastructure is based, first of all, on the fact that uh, in the uh, technical approach we can see in the model, we can only see the life cycle of one object. Uh, for example, uh, distance of road. Uh, so it actually um, is uh, actually going away from real needs of uh, manager because uh, it doesn't make sense because in exploitation uh, they are managing, for example, a regional network of roads. They have to see the whole network and one object uh, only during the construction phase or maybe guarantee period. But then such a piece of road is actually getting blurred or lost in the whole infrastructure structure and it is actually uh, for uh, uh, all uh, horizons of infrastructure so borders of the object uh, get blurred all the agnostics of the states uh, uh, traffic analysis and uh, maintenance uh, uh, all that uh, actually refers to the whole network or the whole infrastructural portfolio well exception being con uh, concession pro project so uh, promoted by some uh, representative of technical uh, beam, uh, uh, seeing, uh, perceiving the whole life cycle of the building uh, is right, maybe for bridge units, but for horizontal infrastructure, it is just uh, act, uh, acting uh, art for itself. Uh, it is just uh, transferring by force uh, the volume uh, buildings onto roads. Uh, uh, so we see a life cycle we say life cycle, but we mean uh, two completely different matters uh, under the term in relation to one object and, uh, to, on the other hand, to the system, infrastructural system. Uh, thank you, Sławek. Uh, CO2, uh, it was directed to Maciej, but maybe uh, Alex is ready to answer that. Where to get data for CO2 calculations? I mean, emission values for specific materials works. Alex, are you ready to answer? Yeah, hi. You, uh, thanks for the question. Do you, you know that the world doesn't have enough of this data? Uh, this was a common question. Um, it's something that we are growing in our individual businesses, in our companies, so that we can answer this exam question. Um, we have some data sets um, uh, from um, like the ICE version 3 uh, data set is a source that um, your audience can research. That's an excellent source of, um, of carbon cost data. Um, but I think we all need the, um, the producers and of materials and products to start labeling uh, and, and improving their the transparency of the carbon data within the products that they supply so that that can assist. Mm. Um, but as we've also heard today, it's not simply about the the embedded raw material carbon, but also in um, that spent through our, our activities, the clarity in how much we spend moving earthworks around, journeys to site. This is all data that's within our own gift, in our own companies. We just need to find a way of calculating that. Um, in a more accurate way that we can give the correct answer, a true picture of our carbon footprint. For that, I think you're going to need a system, and I think that system is sterling. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. Uh, there are two questions left. Uh, both are uh, connected with uh, digital twins. Uh, so, Camille, uh, w what, in your opinion, is the difference between a digital twin for the design and operation phase? Could it be the, 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 same, the same twin? I think, in my vision of digital twins, that digital twin is rather a system of models, a system of system, kind of the base to produce another models, for example. It's not like we, uh, we are like basing on this digital twin uh, reach uh, of data, 
to produce another models. FAM models, for example, models for LCA calculations, carbon calculations, and so on. So uh, in this manner, I think that we can have this digital twin, which should be the same digital twin through all the whole life cycle of an object. And for basing on our needs, on the uh, specific stage of, of, uh, of object, of construction, we should create models basing on this central digital twin models, which will be, uh, which will be needed uh, specifically for the stage of operation, maintenance, uh, creating, designing, or, or, or uh, other stages and other analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last question, uh, thank you. Uh, the last question is uh, about uh, the differences between a digital, uh, uh, the idea of digital twin and digital shadow. Is it really necessary to, to, to follow the, the idea digital twin when the digital shadow concept uh, might be easier, more feasible to implement and create excellent basis for digital twins in the future? Yeah, yeah, digital shadow is a really good start to start digital twinning, I think, because digital shadow, idea of digital shadow is to follow uh, the real objects. So in this way, we are introducing this one way operation when digital shadow is following data, is collecting data from a physical object. But to get full benefits from this digital twinning idea, we need to introduce digital twin which operates by directionally so we are not only getting collecting data from physical counterpart physical object but we are also affecting through digital twin digital twin affects the physical counterpart so for example for bridges this is not so obvious to see like for example for autonomous cars when digital twins in milliseconds gives uh, you know this bidirectional uh, bidirectional uh, operation when digital twin of autonomous cars gets information from cars and then make really fast decision which affects counterpart the car but in bridges we also can have this bidirectional uh, operation two-way operation because of decisions so digital shadows follows collects data of physical counterpart, but then digital twin produces uh, produces decisions which affects uh, the real bridge, the real counterpart. So this is why I think that digital shadow is a good start for digital twinning, but to fully benefit from this solution, we have to implement digital twin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's let's close this uh, beam dimension session. Um, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, uh, I'd just like to welcome you uh, for the to invite you for the next uh, session, which is open beam.